or well the people that do do that kind of thing either never finish their application or leave the role play very quickly after they have had their application accepted this episode was requested by my patron olivia spare room with karen terry hey y'all and welcome to spare room I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about how to write a good RP application. When you join a group, there's typically some kind of application process. Yes, appless RPs exist, and hop-in, hop-out groups exist as well, but today we're going to be talking about the more traditional RP group experience that uses one of the biotypes that I discussed in my biotypes video, and I'll link that up in the card if you're curious what I mean for that. And we're going to be discussing this from the point of view of somebody that is filling out the application to join the group. How can you do this to increase your chances of getting accepted quickly? If you're here as a moderator or an admin looking to create an application, I've got a video for that already, so I will link that up in the card if that's your situation. All right, with all that said, let's get into my five tips for writing a good application. If you're surprised at this tip, welcome. Welcome to my channel. This must be the first Spare Room episode you have seen. Um, happy to have you here. How are you doing? I'm pretty good today. So yes, you have to read all of the information that the roleplay has provided for you. This may be a lot, this may be a little, it just really depends on the type and style of the roleplay in question. Now, I don't mean that you have to fully memorize or synthesize all of the information that you have read, but you do have to read it. I can promise you, as a mod, we can tell the difference between someone asking a question because they forgot a detail or they didn't understand something that they read versus someone who didn't even try to read it. So please, read it. Admins and mods and sometimes players put a lot of work into that. And if you're asking questions that they're having to answer, you're having to read their answers anyway, so why not just read what they already put together? It's going to make your life so much easier because it's going to give you an idea of what is already present in the roleplay, what the roleplay is about, and what they might need so that you can write the best application possible. Once you've read all the information, I recommend opening up the application and taking a look at it. Typically, I'll fill out all of the out-of-character information, so the information about me, like name or pronouns or whatever, and then I will go look at the in-character information, and I'll read through all of the questions and stuff that they're asking for before I fill any of that out. This is because knowing what they want to know about the character that I'm crafting for the roleplay helps me know what I need to develop now versus what I can develop later inside of the roleplay itself. You don't have to figure out or know every little detail about your character up front. I know I certainly don't do that. I don't know anybody that actually does that. Or, well, the people that do do that kind of thing either never finish their application or leave the roleplay very quickly after they have had their application accepted. Now that you've read everything and know what the expectations are as far as the application goes, you probably have thoughts in your head either about the character that you're going to create or about the roleplay itself. This is the time to ask all of those questions. Anything that didn't stick in your mind from reading the lore, any of the rules that didn't make sense, maybe you want to see if the type of character you're thinking about will fit in, whatever those questions are, now is the time to ask them. You're armed with all the knowledge you can get on your own at this point, and I believe any roleplay that's actually worth joining is going to welcome questions that you have when you're at that point. And I think it's good, even if you don't have a lot of questions, to go ahead and ask one or two just to see how the mods respond. You do this for the same reason that you do it in a job interview. This will help you gauge what the environment that you're about to step into is like and if it will actually work for you. A good question to ask is, what are your most wanted characters or roles or jobs or insert whatever noun makes sense for that particular roleplay? This is a great question, regardless of what you've read or remember, because it shows interest. In RRP, we have these listed, but I never mind getting this question because it's really easy to answer. We can just point to that list, and it's something that I wouldn't expect people to necessarily remember with all of the volume of information that they've read. So it's a very easy question to answer, and it shows that they 
care about joining in a way that's going to work for them and the role play as a whole. Now it's time to actually fill out the app. Now, I can't tell you what every mod team is looking for, but this is what me and my mod team are looking for, and I don't think we're super unusual in the way that we assess applications. Your app needs to demonstrate two things. First, that you've read the lore, and second, that you can add to it in an interesting way. Now, interesting is subjective, of course, something that you might find interesting, someone else might find OP, but because you've read all the lore and everything that's been provided to you in the roleplay, you should have a good sense of what's acceptable versus not acceptable. One thing that I think is really important here is to read the bios of all of the other accepted characters that are already in the roleplay, and that will give you a good idea of what's already being taken care of and where you might be able to fill in with your character. One type of app that I hate rejecting is when a character is really good and well-written and thought out, but they're basically identical to another character that we already have. It sucks when that happens, but we want everyone to feel special. So when we get an app like that, we typically say they have to change some things because their character is simply too similar to this other character. Once you've filled out your app, don't submit it yet. Proofread it. Why are we proofreading? Well, because this is your first impression to the roleplay, and we want it to be a good one. Even if you have no intention of proofreading your roleplay posts once you're in the roleplay, at least proofread your app. Does the app make sense? Does it include everything that needs to be included? Is it grammatically correct? Since typically you have a lot more time to fill out an app than you would to do your reply in a roleplay, let's put our best foot forward and proofread. I'm going to link my clear writing video up in the card if you need help on this step, so go take a look at that if you have any struggles with your proofreading ability. To recap, we covered five tips for writing a good roleplay application. One, read the rules and lore. Next, read the questions on the app. Then ask questions yourself. Finally, actually fill out the app. And then lastly, proofread it. So what'd you think? Are you gonna use some of these? Is this already basically what you do when you fill out an app? If so, what would you add to that? Let me know all of that down below and don't forget as always to make it a great day.